series against each other in that tournament. And LGD took all of the games. They didn't lose a single one to OG. And in that particular tournament, they play a very same style, same speed as the drafter we're seeing here. LGD going for the very comfort mid-game pick, mid-game dominance. And OG kind of fell into the trap. OG was picking support heroes like Phoenix that was a little bit slow. And I think this is, again, stylistically a very same type of draft. And I think LGD's got their number when it comes to this kind of speed of games. We'll see if it actually will come to fruition, but right now, good start here as LGD will be able to secure three bounty rooms. Yeah, they definitely have very up-tempo picks. Uh, the landing stage, even then, you have the Night Stalker, the Shaker, who can move around relatively early. You've got pretty difficult to gank lanes here with the Batrider for Yao in the off lane, Ame, the safe lane, Bristle. Uh, of course, the Leshrac is a bit vulnerable. LGD have played the hero, I believe, four times coming into this game. They only lost one. That was the game against VP, where yep. VP just ran at maybe all game long, and he never really got going. They ran at everybody. Yeah, I think did. that's the style that you want to take to LGD. You know, they're, they're a very comfortable team if you give them the laning stage. They, they are slow to adapt once, you know, you just lose two to three lanes. But let's talk about this game here. Yao supporting on the Batrider on the mid lane. We'll just stack the Napalm. And Ana has a Magic Stick queued up, but definitely will want it right now. And Victoria also roaming around uh, on the Night Saga, at least for now. As we see 11, 11 dropping low in this top lane. Jarek trying to bring him out, gets off the lift. No tails there with the follow-up, and it's an early first <laughs> one to OG. And I don't know if it's actually a disaster, but it's certainly a good start here. We're definitely seeing Earthshaker switch up their skill build here. What you used to do on Earthshaker offlane is you used to block, the fissure to block, and then, you know, j just to get the creep equilibrium back. Uh, casual tri lane mid, slow on it down early. That's the recipe for LGD. They move on to him for napalm charges, and they will quickly break through that low level flame guard five napalm charges down he goes lgd putting the pressure on ana early now jarek's coming in maybe he might want to make a go on him but a good lift interrupts and will reset i think that the beauty of this pressure is how early it's coming something that the panel pointed out is that lg likes to roam their supports as they hit level twos and three this is one minute 30 seconds in the game and i think that might have caught og off guard yeah, you've got a tri lane level one night stalker bat only just now hitting level two with the dual lane. So yeah. where this duo is known for their roaming around that eight to fifteen minute mark, they're getting started very early. Good skewer here bottom. It's gonna drag Ame back under the tower. Looking at this particular lane, historically we do see Bristleback do very well in 1v1s against melee heroes, but well, on S4 getting his CS. I mean, he is going to get his farm, but I think the beauty of the, the lane for LGD right now is it frees up the two support, right? Ame is going to be fine in this 1v1, which allows the Batrider and the Night Stalker to be off the map. Batrider in particularly, especially when you play him in a support position, he needs to stack for himself. They have found Fly here deep behind enemy lines with Yao stacking up the Napalm. He's got the point in Firefly. He's got there no is TV. no teleport yeah, scroll. He is. Pedestrian Lich, just a <laughs> casual stroll, but will they be able to wrangle him down? Tries to get on top oh, of him. Sure. Running low on mana here, though. He's only going to have one more Napalm stack. I don't know if he actually gets Fly. He's going to try uh, okay. the angle Fly's taking. Six Napalm stacks, roasting, and will go down. And while that was happening, maybe actually takes down Ana Solo in the mid lane. Yeah, he's got a double damage rune, and that was a big factor in that. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Ame dodging away from that uh, Shockwave. 11 almost died top while it was all happening. So action all over the map, but so far, so good for LGD. That kill on Ana, especially, very crucial, as he's now died two times already. Yeah, I'm also surprised why uh, Fly was making that kind of cavalier movement across the map. As a Lich, you generally just stay in the lane and help out whoever you're laning against. That sacrifice has not been used for a long time, and it just breaks my heart, man. Finally, he does cast it on the mid lane. Fly going back to getting his. Perhaps wanted to get a ward down, as there is a Bat Rider, uh, a Night Stalker, or so, um, a Bristleback, and a Leshrac. Three heroes who can clear these stacks pretty early. Yep. So it may have been on Fly's mind, as there is, in fact, already a single double stack here near that mid lane. The danger for OG is that LGD is able to do so much, and it's daytime. You know, we're going to head into nighttime about 20 seconds, and now uh, Victoria's level two. He's, a, he's got the boots, so I think he's going to be able to apply more pressure. I wonder where the pressure is going to go to, though. Two supports, smoked up. Nighttime, let's go. Night is about to fall, and LGD get aggressive here. No direct vision of this rotation, and who do they find? It's Mr. Fly in the river. The sacrificial lamb, it appears. Yao, though, still on the chase. They'll slowly work him down. One more round of auto attacks. Kill secured, but now it's Ana who has to be cautious. With the haste turn picked up, will be fine as long as this is active. 
but did commit his flame guard. And meanwhile, on the top lane, 11 being hounded here. OG on the chase. Lance comes in. Jerex there has the lift if needed. Blocks him in with his body. The totem, not enough damage, though. 11 does bring him low. Is there any TP support? No siree. Their eyes are on Ana mid. I think that Hastur just ended, and they will descend now. Looking to catch him out the flame guard and cooldown. Goes for the slight. The stun is there. Follow up comes through. LGD, can they burn him down? Yes, siree. They do it again. Another death for the Ember. Three deaths for Ana early in this middle lane. Something the panel touched on is shut down Ana, and they have done just that. It seems like it's very easy for LGD to shut down Ana. The Lich mid lane to me have pretty much no impact. You could even make the argument that Lich is making the lane weaker. We've seen, He's I think, a lot. Three, three or four ga Lich games on this main stage where the Liches have not helped their team secure the laning stage. It seems like everyone's grown more adept at just ganking, For sure. punishing the Liches' lack of defensive capabilities getting ahead early. As LGD smoke up fly, did break that smoke. I'm not he does have a ward here on the hill as well, so realizes something is up. In fact, two wards. They so could swing back Very nervous four. about these early pressure rotations. Instead, Victoria, though, looking to cut them off. It's a pretty tanky hero to dive under the tower. Eight stick charges also available. They'd love to kill the Magnus before he hits six. But it seems this gank will be thwarted. Nice soccer, non-stop movements across the map. No points into uh, Crippling Fear just yet. We'll make some of these uh, ganks a little bit tougher, like, you know, preventing S4 Skewer or the ultimate from the Ember Spear. But for now, we're going to look to bottom here. He did have a, a ward previously. I think it just expired, and now S4 look being at pursued Yow's out. preparation. He knows where he's going to go. S4 being read like a book. Six to two, the score. One kill per minute. You talked about high tempo, Lumi. That's exactly what we're seeing. LGD are not giving OG any breathing room. Top lane. The one lane that you could arguably say that it's going pretty good for OG, but still. I think Shaker is one of those heroes that you give him a minute or two of free farm time, he'll be just fine. He's actually going back for an Iron Talon, so looking to recover in the jungle. Something that you don't see too often for Shakers. I've seen a lot more of the early blink rushes, some sort of casual mana item to help you spam. Those enchant totems and fissures, but LGD keep the aggression flowing in the bottom lane. S4. He did go for those early points uh, in Empower as well as Skewer, but now maxing out the Shockwave here. He is one of their main sources of deep push. He gets the two here, Skewer. However, it may have spelled his downfall. The oh. chase comes out, double TP in, single TP out. Victoria going to scurry away. They cancel one. They brought in tower. two more. Huge commitment for this tower, and they get the deny. S4 will avoid giving away too much gold here to LGD. But same time, Lumi, it's a Night Stalker bat and a tower has fallen. The other thing is that because so many people poured it to the bottoms, maybe was able to just let loose this Diabolic Edict and deal a significant amount of damage to that tier, tier 1 mid. Now, I think the tier 1 bottom is not as important uh, as we've seen in this main event so far, but getting that tier 1 mid down so low makes the next gank into push a lot easier once you do open up the map. The rotating top, but a dire scan reveals maybe Cracks the Pulse Nova. He wants to group up here and make a play as 11 was about to hit level 6, but no tail. The rest of OG suss him out. We'll retreat to safety. We'll see if we have a further skirmish here. Victoria roaming up the hill and into 2. Can they bring him down, though? He's rather tanky, and it is nighttime for 10 seconds longer. Why? Tries to get over the cliff, but they clip the wings, taking Victoria out. Two kills now for OG over the last couple minutes. One tower down, so it seems as the night ends, LGD likely will back off for a little bit. What's next for them, Lumi? They've had a, it seems, a very successful start to this game. I think you want to get your Batrider's economy up. He's been kind of uh, very studious, stacking up the jungle for himself and then farming it. And then you want to give space to the Shaker. Uh, LGD doing well right now, but they definitely need a Blink Shaker to kind of maintain their lead in the mid game. And granted, they have very good kind of mobile active cores to allow them to do so. You know, maybe on the Lashrak, he could help pushing buildings, he could help for ganks. And of course, Ami on the Bristleback can do uh, the same thing. So I think LGD game plan working very well so far. Yeah, we already saw the bat stacks previously near the mid lane. He's now managed to hit level 5 as a roamer. Pretty successful start for him. Did get a bit of experience early mid. Also, the Bristleback Ancients were stacked up previously. You can actually see Yao going to stack them once more. So, diligent and very efficient with his time in these early moments. How about OG? What's next for them? It's really hard to say because I feel like their heroes are so under-leveled that they are unable to do too much. Rubik, not close to 6. I mean, Lich 
also wants six before you, you know, start that big engagement. It's a Lich who's lower level than a Batrider that's been ganking nearly constantly. Yeah, uh, he hasn't been able to ca uh, cast a sacrifice. But top lane, 11 does get picked, caught off here. Well, they're going to pick him off. The Echo's available. No Tail knows he needs to be very careful about how he pursues. Probably hoping to force a TP, but 11 is very patient. And LGD won't overcommit to that. I think the big point here for OG is going to be the Blink Dagger timing for Magnus, but S4 has also got a very tough time in the early lane stage. This is the first time I've seen LGD win so hard in the early game in the main event, and this is where they're strong at. You know, this stage of the game and the next 15 to 20 minutes. A big part of it, how they always win all their games. A big part of it is how OG drafted, right? Because they picked a Magnus first. This here is not known for his laning prowess. They followed up with two cores that need a bit of time to come online. Ember Spirit, not known for lane dominance. PL, pretty strong in the laning stage, but also a hero that generally will sit in his lane that first 10, 15 minutes for the most part. Uh, and passive supports. The Rubik, who can get aggressive, but needs a partner to roam with. And of course, Jerax really needs to be a big impact player for the team as they're a bit light in the initiation department. So he spent a lot of time farming, and it's in part because of that passivity of OG's draft that it feels like LGD have been allowed to dictate the tempo early. Yeah, passivity from the support, uh, from the Lich, from the Rubik as well. I mean, what we saw out of Jerax yesterday, he was breaking smokes up hills, he was planting very deep wards, he was active all over the map with heroes like Earthshaker as well as Earth Spirit. But today, just very silent. Here comes the next bout of aggression. LGD smoked up and out in front to try and reveal this. Is nice Mr. Oh, but he gets caught out here. Can they lasso him down? They do have it available. They drag him back in. They'll pick him off. They lost the Shaker, though. It was a good start from Ana, but the persistence of LGD does begin to pay off as Jerax moves in. He's got the lasso of his own, but he's going to die very quickly here. He does manage to get it off. Dragon maybe a deeper. They got to burst him down fast. The Pulse Nova flying out. Ame joins the fray. This Bristle backs full HP, and now OG. Scrambling the retreat, keeps on chasing forward. Can they get out successfully? He's trying to focus on No-Tail here. Still a few seconds for the Stoppelganger, but the Frost Armor keeps him alive. The Shockwave forces him away, and OG end up breaking evenly here after what looked like a very bad start. Well, that one value point of Frost Armor did so much. They're giving No-Tail the uh, armor that he needs to survive the Quill Spray, as well as giving the attack speed slow as the Bristleback does layer his uh, a flail weapon, I guess is what it's called. But look at the dodge here with this. That was sick. Otherwise, Ana dies very early in the fight. Instead, they have to commit a lot to bring him down. The lasso's blown on him. Jarek's able to steal that. And LGD can, while they chase forward, they're running right into the big AoE combo of OG. Yeah. Lestrak went in, but right now in the game, he's not tanky enough to sit in the front line like that. And he got quickly brought down as well. This is the real, I, I think the low point for Lesh, where you've got all your mana region items, your farming items, but he has yet to pick up that first HP item, the point booster, maybe the vitality booster of the Bloodstone. So he's especially vulnerable at this stage. Yeah, I'm surprised that he hasn't picked up his point booster yet. He's got the gold to do so, but I guess uh, that fight was a little bit too fast. Definitely could have saved maybe his life there, or at least discouraged OG from chasing so far. So a win for OG, but they might have to forfeit this tower now. Even with the Frost Armor up, it seems like they want to trade. No Tails on the bottom lane. The Lash is going to likely edict that tower down. Although, as I say that, he seems to be rotating. So OG not doing this particularly quickly. No Tails a lot more committed. Yeah, that Frost Armor again being super annoying to this Bristol back push. And finally, the Shrek will move up and take the building, but I think they lost a lot of time while doing so. They could have already had this tower down and been pushing towards the Tier 2. Or defending their Tier 1s. So right. You know, whatever is more important to them. But Ana is going to get a significant amount of damage to this mid-Tier 1. As we've been mentioning, the mid-Tier 1 is really what gives you the map control for your side of the map. Ancients being stacked up here in the meanwhile by OG as well. Obviously, with the Magnus, the Ember, they've got some farm potential of their own. See Jerex snagging a pretty big spell. That's a great Level one. 4 Split Earth and yeah. has the, the much better cast animation. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, Lashrak, he, he have to, the pony has to go up, his arms waving about, but Jerex just, he's the Grand Magus. Quick spell, quick cast. Yeah. Skips out on all the dancing and shenanigans and yeah. just gets st straight to the pain. So LGD are going to slow down now. It is nighttime. A very modest lead. They're going to farm up their Ancients. Next steps for LGD, Lumi. What do you want to see out of them? I want to see a faster Blink Dagger from O11. Remember e XSS the other day? He was able to find such an early and quick Blink, and he was just all over the map, pouncing an Earth Spirit, as well as a Faces Void. Oh, sorry, uh, Ember Spirit and a Faces Void. 
this game, I think he is the best and most reliable initiation against your Ember, against the PL. But because he's so slow and granted he had a very tough lane, I think OG will feel like, okay, we still have a lot of time in this game where we get to farm a little bit more bravely on the map. Well, maybe is closing in on the Bloodstone now, only 150 gold shy. So should be getting it with this next wave. Pretty good timing for Lesh. Certainly a lot better than what we saw yesterday. Also, S4 has his uh, Blink Dagger now, so... Lots of key items coming, and it looks like OG about to smoke up and make their first aggressive move of the game. I think what they want to get out of this is a clean two-man kill into a tier one mid-push. And wrapping into the jungle. It's tough to do this at nighttime. At the same time, perhaps LGD won't expect it, though. They are hanging Radiant's rather far back for now. OG attack. should be able to at least get a deep ward down. And in fact, LGD smoke, they move in, but OG already in position. The smoke is broken. Victoria flies high. He gets off the Sansan onto the start, but wait for the blink. Look for S4. Will he find the opening? The lasso comes through. The RP's only on the Batrider, and it's after the lasso. Not the best start, but Jerks can follow up. Steals the Fissure. The chain stun is coming, though. Will he be able to do much after this? Ame still stands strong. No Tail's got a back way. They get the 11 kill as well. They've traded an Ember, and so far, so good, but they might lose No Tail to Silence. And now in round two, LGD chasing forward. They want Jerex as well. Well, getting the goo on the Rubik could spell trouble. He's got Fissure, Fissure though, blocks them off, not completely, but far enough away that LGD won't pursue. So two heavy cores down for OG, meanwhile LGD trading utility heroes. And that engagement was the exact scenario that the panel pointed out where, sure, you have Magnus, you have Point Dagger, but during nighttime, where do you find the vision to get the initiation? Both teams were smoked up. The smoke breaks, and of course, the team with the Night Stalker in the front line is able to get the better vision advantage. Smoke breaks, Victoria just flies in the air, gets perfect vision, they know where the Magnus is, and as a result, sure, the you know, RP came out, but like you mentioned, it's only a one-man RP. So easy for the rest of LGD just to come in and give them the easy victory. It's also two fights where Fly has not really gotten the best Chain Frost bounces. The last fight, fight I think it didn't even bounce at all, or maybe bounced once, so... Perhaps something that could change the equation, but again, for OG, Executing this big AoE combo is a lot more difficult because of that vision disadvantage. You could make the argument that he'll get a great Chain Frost if everyone was clumped up in the RP, right? So I, I think it kind of goes both ways. Right. Um, like they're, you mentioned, they're very reliant on the RP, yeah. at least for now. And I think this is where PPE brought up, like, you know, you, you rather see a secondary initiator. Um, it, it's so hard for the Magnus player to just be that initiation right from the get-go. But perhaps, let's say, if you have an Earth Spirit or if you have you know, like Kunkka, for example, that could set up the, the first half of the engagement, and then the Magnus comes in as, you know, the big bomb, then the team fight goes much, much better for OG. So we do see the Night Stalker Helm of the Dominator build again. Lil ran this the other day, was extremely successful. He is already doing some scouting with his Hellbear Smasher. So a couple of interesting... Oh. Hold that thought, Lumi. We've got S4 getting caught out here. Fissure stolen again, an even bigger grab than the kill. Jerax stealing the right spells here. This could, this could be the setup for that big RP next time around. He has it before a big fight breaks out. So the other day, the, uh, the Helm of Dominator on the Night Stalker allows him to, you know, first of all, stack, be that secondary chain stun cancel, uh, canceling TPs and things like that. But one interesting that creep that he could actually opt to get for this game is the, uh, the purge creep, the satir, the tiny satyr creep. Yeah. You could purge off these like really annoying buffs like. Ice armor, you can purge off things like him power. I'm not sure whether he's going to go for that route, but it's definitely some, some option that he has. Could be huge Radiant's for them. Uh, as far as other item progression goes, uh, it looks like Ana is going to build an early Yule Scepter here. So feeling very pressured by that Night Stalker silence. Not going to go for any big damage items or like a greedier Boots of Travel, but in fairness, he will be farming quickly with the Empower as long as he's not being ganked. Grabs a double damage rune now. OG. Clustered near the Roche pit. Is it about that time where Roche is on the menu for other team? I think both teams are not great at taking Roche on, although uh, LG is definitely better. Um, Dyer, they have, they have the Bristleback. Yeah, they have the Bristleback, whereas OG has, you know, PL, which is notoriously one of the worst heroes to do Roche with. So OG more afraid that LGD might try to walk into the pit. Yeah, but OGD definitely needs... I don't think either team could just walk in and take it. They have to get a successful fight to do so. And right now, again, I'm just like checking on Levin's farm, and he is still so far away. This is an offlane shaker at 19 minutes. Four position shakers sometimes get blinked by now. I guess, in fairness, 
you know, Yao has been occupying the jungle, but it's, it is a very slow start. Yeah. He's got the uh, Iron Talon as well. Yeah. Just supplement that farm, but... Yao is going to pursue, though. It's nighttime, and they're on the hunt. Jarek sees this coming. Yao will blink due north, <laughs> and in doing so, misses the opening. <laughs> Immediately, Jarex says, let's smoke gank. I don't know if they actually want to do it during darkness, but OG are looking to push up here mid. They just give up a tier one for free. So. Not even contested. OG knocked the tier one down. That's two for them. Holding almost even LGD with the one tower edge thus far. I think OG have to be pretty happy about. They're not really much of a pushing lineup. And they're only slightly behind the lash, the bristle. LGD grouping up for a tier two. They might be looking to make a move here on Ame in the mid lane. No town pushing him back now as Ame is going towards a Radiance build. So going to be playing more of that hard carry bristle. Give them a little more access into late game. Not going for those big five man items. We have seen that build before where you just pick up like your completed pipe very early on. Potentially just look to five man a lot more. Not a super big thing, but I think having Radiance on your team, especially against a Blink Dagger, User like Magnus is super annoying for him. Oh, OG on the smoke. They try to get Victoria here. They will catch him out with the Veil coming through, but they are ganking into a shrine. Nobody there to help. OG with a clean kill, taking down the Night Stalker at a time that should be his. And now perhaps going to take this tier one top as well. He was actually busy microing his Satir Banisher, and then I think his hero just kind of ran the wrong way. Oh, there's that purge creep you mentioned. Yeah. It's the hidden downside. <laughs> to, to go in for the helm. Oh, they actually see 11. Oh, yeah, it would be a juicier kill. He's 500 gold from the blink, but OG catching him out and stealing the Fissure again. Jerax is loving this game. They might even get that purge creep, Bloomy. <laughs> comes the PL, lancing oh, it out. God. Jerax now can try and Fissure Yao in the trees. He gets him! a TP! He gets him too! Well, he's got the blink, so he shouldn't really die here, but he's Space stuck in a upper position. Yeah. The crazy thing for OG, oh my god, Yao blinks in, they see him, they, and now... <laughs> they have the chain for us. Pokey pokey! No <laughs> Okay, he's gone. Wow, the play is from Jack. That is so cloudy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Painful this is a crazy thing. They're able to do this during nighttime, which is supposed to be LGD's strength. I think LGD is definitely making a lot of blunder. They're, they lack plays because their Shaker don't have Blink. They can't make for these like big smoke angs into the enemy jungle because they don't really have a very reliable initiator. Sure, Batrider's got Blink, but against heroes like Ember Spirit as well as PL, the Blink Batrider sometimes is too slow. You need something a little bit more guaranteed. Yes. The man of the hour. Stolen Fissure three, four times now. Using it to farm can basically insta-kill the wave. With just that nuke combo. So this will accelerate Jarex's farm. The Yule's not complete on Ana. Gonna go back for the BOTs. You can see the items starting to come in for OG. We'll have better initiation with this. S4 can potentially bide his time, sit back a little bit. Also wants to build a Yule Scepter. Again, the jump. Now OG looking on mid. Chain Frost coming through. Ana looking to lock him down. Has the chains available and will hold him in position for now. The Bristle Bar. Back being assaulted from all sides, but in comes the reinforcements. They do bring the bristle down. The last one now committed, trying to finish up No-Tell. They're roasting in the Pulse Nova. He jumps up on the high ground. Victoria tries to do but the stolen Fissure! Jerex making the plays! Not enough. They will end up losing two. The cores fall. They did manage to get the bristle back. And that ends up being a bit of an LGD win here. A big LGD win. They also committed the RP for that. I think that was very unlucky bounces from the Lich. He only hit him one time. That was the initial cast. There was no bounce back. He just they got dispersed in the creep wave. S4, Woo! quick snipe, but maybe the punish now. Oh, Fissure gonna whip. Then the boulder toss comes in. He gets Fissure. thrown on the other side. A fresh stolen Fissure. Eleven keeps on giving it away, and now Jerex wants to chase him out. They might actually be able to kill him. Fissure, ready. It's a bit too far to go, and is being hounded by that rock golem. Still, maybe he finds an opening here. He's gonna take that top tower down. Bot's up. Quietly, he has not died. So up to 16 Bloodstone charges now. And I think more importantly, he's working towards the BKB. There is no answer whatsoever from OG. He's not working towards it. He's basically got it. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. And so what, what is the answer when he activates the BKB? There's no physical damage whatsoever right now on OG. You he, run away, right? <laughs> you try to dodge that, br that fight. With well, the... trying to run away from Fissure, Goo, Night Stalker, Batrider, these are not the heroes that you could, you could easily run away. So I think LGD has hit a very strong timing. 
that blink dagger I keep asking about on O11, it's available now. He's working towards a four staff. I think LGD, maybe they wait for the next natural night and then they just go. Just take build, just take fights. Yeah. As for OG, potentially they can chain stun him. There is no direct save here for LGD uh, if they manage to catch the Lashrak out. But at the same time, there's a lot of counter initiation. The Earthshaker Echo, uh, potentially Yao jumping into the back lines and lassoing somebody. So, like you said, it's. It feels like a very strong timing for LGD now. Would love to see them get a gem soon if they can work it into their economy so they can extend that map control edge because OG have three great wards down right now, Lumi. Actually, four. They see a lot of this map and could well catch LGD trying to go for a smoke play heading into the next nighttime. Team sitting back for now, biding their time. The Fissure comes in, Jerex looking to start. They are going to try and slay the Beast. Can they change the wow, Skewer coming through? But he gets the BKB up. Now S4 is in danger, Yule Scepter committing with the Post Nova. Fissure the other direction, and now the Lassa one. Yeah, looking for more. They're going to bring down the Magnus. The RP was saved for a rainy day. And the rain might be falling rapidly at this rate. He has no buyback, though. Has he opened up a path towards the Roche Pit? Perhaps. Do LGD chance it? They definitely want to defend their tier 2 bottom, though. PL is doing a very excellent job making a, a good situation out of that one here. And yeah, we're going to see maybe towards bottom. What? You say that, I get a kill he gets here. echoed. Now the totem as well. Maybe try to change somebody. It's not quite right. No time manages to juke away. The micro skills are a bit lacking as LGD still nuke him down. Nice silence. Charging forward. Ana wants to get aggressive here, but as mentioned, he is silent. Jerex lurking. Gets the tier of Fissure. Chain Frost coming through. How much will it bounce? Once. Oh, and again, Fly can't get these bounces. Still might be enough, though. Victoria's on the run. Yao with the Yule Scepter trying to stay alive. They don't finish off the Night Stalker. They will cage the bat. So they get something, and actually the Night Stalker did get clipped as Jerex jumping in at the final moment, manages to take Victoria down. The Still critical. though, OG are losing a lot of cores here, Lumi. Yeah, they lost the PL, the critical kill of, of going for Lashrak, not possible. He is so tanky now, 18 Bloodstone charges with still a 19, uh, 9 second BKB. How do you kill this Lashrak? If they're perfect, they might have been able to. Like The RP came a half second late, quarter of a second late. At least maybe they bring him low enough he's running away, but... Yeah. For now, at least, they are. They do feel a bit lacking in the physical damage department. It's an empowered PL who can hit fairly hard, but also does not want to be standing next to Lash in the middle of a fight. I mean, they could definitely kill Lashrak if he's on his own, but all Shaker has to do is just throw him one Fissure, and then I, I think suddenly it's... BKB not... and the fight turns. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other big thing is that, you know, as we've been pointing out, Jax has been able to steal these Fissures too easily. I think all 11s definitely need to pepper in Enchant Totems. Uh, in between his spell casting, if possible. So far, I haven't seen Jirax skill still anything apart from the Shaker. The Shaker. That's true. Any other spells that you have your eyes on? We did see the Lasso steal early in the game. So that could be a nice pickup. And the Lesh the Lesh stun. The Lesh stun is well. quite good. Um, Lightning is also not bad from the Lesh Rack because the slow that you get. So, again, the cast animation on, on Rubik is so good that you could kind of sit far back, get that Lightning out. And but if you pick one spell, it's Fissure every time. For sure. LGD going to slow things down now. Taking a look at their item progression. BKB is coming for Ame, but before he gets it, they've got an Alpha Wolf. They'll bring it into the Roche Pit. Looking for an early Aegis and potentially a timing push. There's only two Tier 2s up right now for OG. It's nighttime, Lumi. Can they contest this road? Will they try? He's already down to half. They are streaming towards the pit. It looks like they want to take this fight. Look for the jump forward. Illusions are going to get the scent of what's going on. But Heroes, you have to commit forward, just slowly plotting them in. S4 looking for the jump, but he does get fissured. Blocked away for now. Has to bite his time. Ana can start the party if he wants to jump in with a Remnant. LGD also does Roshan very slowly, so there's a lot of opportunity OG for are looking for it. S4 with the RP. He only gets the Bristle. Now pulling him in. The Chain Frost is going to bounce. They might build a burst him. It's a huge kill. Bristle down. That is next. He buys back. He's going to buy back, though. Time for round two. And in the meanwhile, they do lose their PL. Also dead for 70. The Roche is critically low. If they don't buy back and go in now, they are giving up this Aegis. No PL for 70. No RP. So even if PL buys back, I don't think LG could actually make the challenge. LG will get the Aegis. They give it to I mean, I think normally you want to give it to Lashrak, but of course, the Bristleback just bought back. So you give it to him. And now I think you you got all your timings. You got all your items. It's time to actually just just put your, your, your feet on OG's throw. I think it's, it's really tough for OG now. And on the side, uh, Bristleback BKB is still coming. Maybe the one thing that LGD will want to wait for and was delayed by that buyback. But 
Aside from that, like for OG, do they just split push here? Can they just stall out the game and try and wait out the Sages? It's so hard yes. to split push against Blink Echo Slam, the Blink, Blink Batrider, and of course the Night Stalker. We're going to see the team fight one more time. The Fissure initially was so good that delayed them, but great movement here by maybe Jukes away. And yeah, sure, the, the Bristleback does die, but look at how much damage. Maybe he's doing it. He's just in the middle of everybody. And the zoning potential there. He forces the Rubik back. He forces Fly away. Even the Magnus has to get the hell out. So they can't really fully commit forward there, aside from that Bristle kill. Still waiting for one of those longer, larger scale fights where the Leshrac can potentially really take over. But at least for now, they just do not want to fight the Disco Pony when he's reigning the golden BKB. Shiva's guard coming out here from the Disco Pony as well. And then suddenly he really doesn't have to worry about... Anything. Oh, they're going to try to find Ana here. Could be caught out, dropping the chains, but he gets silence. The boy comes Yules. through. Yules, can they time a stun just right? They do! They catch him They got out. the ensnare as well. Can he actually cast it though? They have enough. LGD, sick timing. They get a crucial kill on Ana. Out for a minute, and that might just be this tier 2 bottom. They cluster up 20 Bloodstone charges. The maybe machine is gaining steam. 8 1 and 5, the score on him. He's been in almost every kill. And now the Echo looking for the jump. No tail S4. Dude, try to run away. It looks like they'll get out of there. No pursuit. The Bat Rider, the Night Stalker, a bit late to join this. So missed opportunity mid. It's going to slow things down. It, it might actually save this tower bottom. As the Lesh did leave that lane. Walking towards it again? No, he's going to pop the shrine on the bottom side. Good movement by OG. Yeah. They, they lose a, a crucial hero in the Ember Spear, but they limit the structural damage. I think this game, more than the one that we saw from Virtus Pro, is showcasing the Night Stalker Helm build. Like, he's cycled through so many different creeps. Having the Dark Troll Warlord here, uh, again, the Nunes here are pretty nice against a hero like Ember Spear. Yeah, and Victoria, the Winged Brothers. Looking for that opportunity to jump. There is no RP. Out for 70, and LGD make their committed move forward. Banging on the tier 3 in this lane. TP coming in from the Ember. He gets hit by a stun right upon his arrival. Ana not respecting LGD. A huge kill to start it. And now the lift trying to turn things around the left, though. Very tanky has the BKB. Is going to force OG back on their heels. They can turn for this tower. The ice armor's there, though. It's keeping it alive. Can't purge that off. And as the BKB ends, the tower drops. Will they commit for more here? Illusion's coming in. OG still holding the line, buying time for the RP. But the buildings are dropping quickly. The Fissure's there, forcing the back on their heels. Here comes the chain falls, but creeps to tank it up. For now, at least LGD staying alive. Still Ame has the Aegis. It's gonna pop once. RP. And they do it again. RP, RP counter at 30. I don't know if they have enough time. Gray Skewer backward by S4. They purge him up as well under the tier 4. He explodes like a faulty S7. And now we're gonna go in LGD trying to do enough damage to the racks. They will take it down. O11 will give up his life. Maybe. I think it's time for him to retreat. No, he wants to go back for more. They got two. They're looking for more. Aegis also down. And OG on the warpath. They did forfeit a melee, but still they chase onwards. Maybe getting forced back. Will he make it out to safety in the trees? He lurks. He's got a BKB in 15. OG. Trying to find these easier pickoffs. Yao is isolated. Yao is going to go down to no tail. A third kill in this chase. Looks like maybe RP is up. Still, still being hounded though. S4 going to find him. Skewer him back. No RP. Big commitment. Still he's tanky. Can they bring him down? I think they aren't confident in this, but they've got four. BKB. Does he try to TP out here and get away? Does he have it? No, one TP's charges. on cooldown. S4 chasing forward for more. In comes the remnant. The chains as well. Lift him up. Blow him up. He's got to deny himself. They give up four and an Aegis. Granted one of them a deny to get that lane of Rex. LGD did get that set of racks, which is the important victory, but I think they definitely could have gotten out without losing so much. OG getting some signs of life here as they are going to get this tier 2 as well. Still though, I think OG is climbing back. 11 lurking with the Echo. Tries to combo, but the interruption comes from Ana. Gets his PL back to safety. Now trying to juke out and away into the trees he goes. See you later. Good. Faints coming here, but still no tail. Getting caught. They dive deeper for him. The lasso connection scores the kill. OG over Pisher one a bit. Now 11 looking to cut off this pesky Rubik. The Grand Magus has no TP. Did they scout that? Do they know? Doesn't seem they'll find him. The Ward will, will identify him rotating into the base, but I think he's safely out of range now. 11 will not pursue. A very tense game. The gold lead has never exceeded 3,000, nor has the experience. That is very unusual at 34 minutes. 
especially with the racks down, right? Like normally, once you take that first lane of racks, you're you know climbing a five to ten k net worth lead. But you're right, OG's definitely staying in. The problem is, I, I just feel like LGD's itemization as well as their heroes are just better suited for this state, uh, stage of the game. Lich to me has really fallen off, has really unable to get his uh, level advantage in the laning stage. Rubik's doing a lot, but it can't just be the Jurax show, you know? You say that. <laughs> Jurax has proven us wrong before, but he's got a tall task, right? Like, they're still very reliant on his spell steals and the RP all being very well placed. And even if they do, a simple BKB timing, if maybe pops it or Ame gets it off, will just ruin that initiation. And you still have to deal with the Echo Slam counter. LG, lots of tools in their arsenal to punish OG aggression. The funny thing is, uh, Sly just threw his Chain Frost in the mid lane. Just like, you know what? My Chain Frost is not doing a lot in team fights. I'm going to farm with it. Now, this is the level 3 Chain Frost as well now, so very low cooldown on that. It can become a, a farming tool. Well, map constricted here. I think LG is going to play patiently. They're going to move around the map, kill both shrines, wait for the next Roshan. I'm just spawning in about one to three, four minutes, depending on the RNG on that one. And then you just go again. Lashrak still king. He has only died once, right? Since uh, picking up his bloodstone. Still not farming the PL. This is such a far cry from what we saw yesterday when Virtus Pro were able to shut him down. But maybe showcasing the potential of the Lesh here. And I, I think the, the big difference is the speed of the game, which I've kind of brought up at the beginning. Remember yesterday when he was playing Lashrak, it was a venomous scale, like every time to his face, every like five seconds. And then they were diving him. The follow-up was yeah. coming from supports. He was never allowed to farm. Instead, this game, OG laned against him passively with the Lich. Like, there was just no pressure. He was able to even get a solo kill against Ember Spirit. I think if you don't pressure, maybe as a mid laner, you know, so much of the conversation is pressuring Ana, you know, shut him down. And the opposite needs to happen here for LGD. If you don't shut down, maybe he is going to take over the game. One of the most talented mid players out of China. LGD have followed up that early success mid well. They've placed down a, a network of wards here to try and pincer OG into their base, prepping for the next Roche. Vision control already was likely to be theirs, just judging from the draft alone, and certainly has continued to be the case. OG have to resort to split push, they have to resort to guerrilla warfare tactics, hide in the trees, dodge fights, try and drag this game out. They, but they, they may very well have to take a risk and roll the dice at the Roche Pit, Lumi. I don't know if you can give that Aegis cheese away to LGD and not be punished for it. For now, they hold back, defending their side of the map, only moving out when they feel it's safe. It is still nighttime, and as it gets to the stage of the game, it stays nighttime more and more with the darkness leveling up. LGD pressing in again on a de-warding journey as a squad, and Yao is going to strike Paydirt here. He finds one of those wards, but OG do start to move towards that location. Seems like they're thinking about a fight. They might get caught off the Bristleback running in. Ana has to be quick on the reactions here. He's got this invis rune. They want to perhaps crack the gem, but he gets clipped by a Fissure. Then the Echo. Heavy commitment for Ana. Jarek's looking for the interrupt, though. He's got Moldy the Enchant Totem. That's not really the spell he needs. Slide of Fist. zippity doo -dah. See you later. Ana is out of there and away to safety. At least for now, S4 was coming in from the side. But Ana very close to dying. Yeah, they got really good chain sent here on Ana, but the damage didn't arrive yet. Lashrak was, I guess, a little bit late to the party. Yeah, he doesn't have the same mobility as some of these other LGD heroes. He had the OTs, but I guess there wasn't a creep to TP onto nearby. That's one other synergy that Night Stalker could give by the helm. You have a creep next to him all the time, so that's true. the BOTs who could fly in. So I do want to talk about Lashrak's item choice here. He has an Agadim Scepter. This is my first time seeing it on Lashrak. The new Ags or new in air quotes, is that you get a, a lightning bolt every 1.75 seconds. I believe it will target heroes or give priorities on hero, but there's a PL on the other side, so I'm not sure how effective it will be in this game. It could just be another way to maybe deal with those illusions as well. Does it work on illusions? Yeah, it, it, that's the thing. Like, it will target the illusion. Okay. You'd rather it will target heroes, right? Like, gotcha. So. so maybe just looking to try and limit what No-Tail can do in these fights. We'll see. As S4 makes his move, Blake Skewer forward, they drop the bail, can they chase Senna perfectly? They maybe want to force out this BKB and then retreat, but he's patient. Ame, a tanky porcupine, and OG won't be able to force it out. Still they pursue though, still they have RP. 
Yeah, like you mentioned, I think they wanted to force out BKB or just a group up for LGD to set up for RP, but it's neither so have been. LGD was very calm. They're like, okay, Bristleback is secured in. He's very tanky. Let's Radiant just chill. OG still taking attack. some risks here at nighttime. Still pushing up, playing rather aggressively, trying to get their own network of wards down, maybe trying to find that pick off, but out comes 11. They understand that if they get a big win here, they can take Roche and uh, Cheese. She's an Aegis. Looking for the leap forward. RP. And now the RP! It's a three! Looking for more S4 with the chain frost. It's a bounce and a beauty from OG! LGD might have to blow these buybacks now! Lashrek. They don't call him the son of Magnus for nothing, Lumi. And of course, that was the first time they actually had vision advantage. A very important observe ward on that hill, overseeing the three heroes as a result. Perfect RP. They get two buybacks. Will OG be brave enough to take Roche? They're working. They're walking towards him, but okay, they're, they're scouted. Yeah, they had to blow the double buyback. They don't have the shaker though. Again, and OG can look for the punish here. Jarex creeping into position, gets the lift off. This could be potentially a dieback. They're gonna lose the Bat Rider. He's almost down. He will fall. They need to at least get on it. They have to find trades here. Skewer forward, dragging three back. Let's track though. The Vanguard in the front lines. There's no tail faints away. They are gonna lose one. The Magnus down, but he's already committed his big load of spells. Can they find more? LGD need it. They need it now. PL will drop. He's also actually doesn't. No buyback. This could be costly. Now they're chasing out. Maybe looking for auto on the low ground. They do lock him in position, slow him down. The lightning hounds him. And maybe now up to 18 bloodstone charges again. They rush towards Roche. They know RP's on cooldown. PL may not have buyback for this. Okay. We can force the objective. Does Jirax go for the steal? He's got blink. He's got four staff. Maybe he drops a gem before that play happens. Do they have a gem detection here for the this Rubik? Doesn't look like if there is a dust on the shaker. Perhaps we'll just pop it, but Jarex also, second thoughts from him. He still lingers in the neighborhood. This is risky, but if anybody saw Afu's heroics <laughs> yesterday, they're going to be tempted in Jarex's oh, position. Too he dangerous. won't risk it. Well, Aegis and Cheese will pass on to LGD. Great play by OG there, at least the first initial half of the fight. But coming in here on the second half, they didn't have the RP. Sure, you got a quick bat pickoff. And we're going to watch that one more time. It's oh. the ward on the high ground. This all came from that early push forward when OG got aggressive at night. This is the first time we've seen a good RP into a good Chain Frost. And you can see how dangerous they are, they are with those spells. But the second half of the fight, they don't have those spells. Lestrat just blinks in and there's just no answer to him. These cores are very tanky on LGD's side, especially when the BKBs are up. And OG don't really have the best heroes to burst them without the RP. Exactly. So you can see in round two of the fight when the RP is on cooldown that it's, while they can force the Batrider to die back and perhaps feeling confident they can just snowball the fight from there, they're actually still very reliant on that RP. I really like the item choice coming out maybe as well, using that Blink Dagger. You know, if you're on the front line, there's a lot of PL illusions. It makes your Aghanim Scepter less useful. But if you blink to the back line, you make Rubik's life very difficult. Same thing with Lich. To a certain extent, even the Magnus. So. The, does maybe just keep on getting stronger here? We haven't seen Lesh get to this stage of the game too often in recent memory. Well, you haven't been watching them LGD games, man. Like, <laughs> whenever he plays Lashrak, yesterday was the only exception. He gets to this stage of the game very frequently. So what's next for him? Any big items still to be picked up? Is it just down to play and positioning from here? Yeah, I think he's pretty much done, right? Look at his item. He's six-slotted. He still has a cheese and backpack. They're looking to potentially jump this mid lane. Ana shoving out the waves. He does have the Lincolns and the Yules. But creeping in from the rear is a Batman. Look for the leap from Yao. Eleven's coming into position. He's got to be quick, slight. Oh. I think Yao came out of him a little bit too soon. You definitely want to wait for the Shaker to go in first. Whether it's just with the Fissure or the Echo Slam. Keep your eyes on buybacks right now. OG have the advantage in that department. All five with the buyback ready. LGD only three. But remember, they have Aegis, they have Cheese. And they are going to try to group up here, Lumi. They're going for it. OG, where's that Blink Skewer? Does S4 find his opening? Almost level 20 now. Still the PL Illusions chipping on me down, but he's completed the heart. He's almost 4,000 health. He is truly a beefcake. They try to skewer him back, chip away, bring that mana down, try to remove some of the quill spam in these fights. OG still just fainting, but the commitment comes from LGD. They get off the lasso. Now the echo follow up. Can they burst anyone down? Magnus RP oh! committed. It's a beauty for that sport. 
in a position. Can they finish them off though? They're so damn tanky. Maybe stays alive. Maybe will finally go down. And now they have Ame on the run. The Quills are stacking up. He's a tough kill. That's for damn sure. A sure the buyback. Lady. Here comes the buyback. They know there's no RP. They know there might not be a Magnus either, and they're going to commit for this. Bring in the Lash. He's very far back though. He's all the way at that wave in the middle near the tier two tower bottom. At the same Ame time, he's fighting against the world. He's not dying yet. At least not yet. Here we go. He's still regening quite quickly. Still has the Asia, so he's Where's the fine. first? Can they kill Ame? They've got to do it skewer here. Back. Twice. They're going to skewer him back. Let's now, try. maybe coming in, but does get controlled. Victoria is in deep as well. He'll follow up more quickly. Remnant forward. Big commitment. They've almost slain the beast. Ame low, low, low. And finally, he finally dies. But now maybe with the BKB, look for the turn. OG got to get the hell out. Two arrows done. Commitment with the nukes. But they all stay alive. Yule Scepter's popping everywhere. Now the commitment forward from the Shaker. Can they finish him up? Glimmer came. Runs to the tree line. Chain they cross. survive. On three heroes nonstop. Skewer's back in. Maybe he's out of buyback. He's going to die. Maybe he will. Out for 70. It's not even that long. To be honest, the Bloodstone might get him back in the fight before OG can punish. Now they try again to kill off the Bristle. He's so damn tanky. He's the one going in. They found one in the trees in the midst of this. They're going to bring him down. Chewie threw on him. Now under Jerex. LGD outlasting OG here. Can they get more? Rubik buys back. Victoria's very low. They got vision on him on the PL Illusions. Can they actually get that very critical kill? Rest of LGD are retreating. Ame cannot be killed either. They're going to try. I purge him up, slow him down, but Shaker's lurking, so is the Batrider. Amazingly, no split push, no ratty, all the way it's still very favorable for LGD, but they didn't even take the tower, Lumi. After all that, OG standing strong, and where we once had eight buybacks going into that fight, right now we've only got the gold for two. That was the Aegis and Cheese push. You gotta keep in mind now, LGD down three buybacks. If OG could big, make a big move, three man RP, three man Chain Frost, and you get two to three random kills on heroes that doesn't have buyback, you could paint a scenario where actually OG could go to the other side and take a rack of their own. They've got a minute. No Ember Spirit. That was a dieback for him. He doesn't have the Bloodstone to work with. Can they make something happen? The Night Stalker eggs also picked up. So the, the vision advantage deep behind enemy lines could come into play now. That flying true sight. Always a threat as they move in. LGD once more under the breach. Look for the opening. Ame for now turning his back to OG, shrugging off the damage. And a sport creeping through the trees, trying to find that dream RP. The son of Magnus lurks. He looks for the jump. Elephant's also They see there. him. They punch him first. Now S4 has to skewer back, and that buys time for LGD. They can keep on hitting this tower, probably bring it down. It's a so, such a slow push that Frost Armor is actually doing so much work. Okay, they bring him back. Bristleback's out of mana now. Round two, and Ember is respawning. I think LGD, content with this, are going to back away, Lumi. They want that next Roche before they go for a push again. <laughs> this game is just putting me on the edge of my seat. My, my heart is pumping. But like you mentioned, the Night Stalker Axe, I think yes. overall, the, like the long run, I, I think it's going to give LGD the advantage. They also have a gem, probably should pass it to the Night Stalker so he can begin dewarding and uh, start getting map control back on their side. But still, a danger point for LGD is that right now you don't have that Aegis and Chief. You don't have buybacks on three of your heroes, and OG could just hell marry you with a big smoke. And they have not been afraid to do it. Even fighting into the Night Stalker at nighttime without vision, they've still made bold forays into LGD territory. It's certainly not out of the question they could try. And perhaps what could help here, they do have that Silver Edge on the PL now, so maybe they can focus this bristle down a little more quickly in upcoming fights already working towards his next damage item he is a level 25 pl yeah but if you find them right like if you want to just look at og vision there is none oh you're gonna find the bristle but do you want to like jump him in right. the, when they're all sitting just, there waiting to counter initiate just put yourself in s force position right like you don't see anything where do you jump you don't jump you're just as afraid so it, it's tough for og to kind of make this comeback play they're gonna try though. Sending those PL illusions to shove out the lanes. LGD in their own right. Still just waiting for Roche. Ame's gonna show himself. Veil deployed. PL illusions handing him back. Not particularly adept at killing those, in fact. He's gonna run. Turns back and wait. Roche could be up very soon. And it all comes down to this fight. If LGD take a convincing winner on the pit, OG might just crumble.
We're also getting to a stage of the game where maybe uh, Bloodstone is actually getting quite low in terms of charges. I think at one point this game had close to 20, maybe 16 to 18, now down to 8. And this is critical in, in terms of how long this, uh, the game has gone on. You want a lot of charges so you can have that quick respawn in late game. But won't have that option here. 4.3k on him. Any other big items coming for you as you look across these two lineups? Something that could change the equation in upcoming fights? I feel like it's not about his item choice. Maybe he could get a Hex. That would be like critical in terms of picking some of these very key heroes. And he does have a Blink. So it is a Blink Hex initiation, but in deep right now is No-Tail. 11 actually gave a quick swing at him. I think they've seen No-Tail. He's in too far. LGD now want to chase him out. The Fissure comes through. S4 is waiting, but he gets caught out. The Lasso's there. Jerex with the steal. Who will he lasso? RP on three. He gets them, but where's the follow-up damage? OG need more. Ame's rushing it. He chugs it off. Lesh is staying alive, too. And OG, they're going to wait for round two of this engagement. Now the commitment forward. The Batrider's down. That's the one hero advantage. The echo from 11. Swing and a miss. Here, Battle Battle says no tail. Chasing up towards Victoria. The lift comes on the Bristleback. They're going to drag him back. They really don't want to focus him. They'd like to ignore him, kill his team, then come back for him. No tail will poke. Will prod from the rear. But really, it's about these squishier backliners. And they're not finding too many. The rest of them stagger back. Back to the base, OG on the chase, S4 has a Blink Skewer available, will he see that opening? Still no buyback on LGD Heroes for two minutes. OG just searching for something, but RP has been spent, and I think OG just have to back off. Roshan is back really, really soon. This is not <laughs> see LGD are just gunning for this Magnus every single fight. S4 running around in Shadow Blade, and they still managed to find him up a hill with the Blink Lasso. And he gets off a good 3-hero RP, but it's not like the ideal timing for OG where they're ready to RP, just kind of to throw it out and then they hope to react. But here's the thing though, there's no more gem on LGD now. If They, they probably need to buy one. I'm not sure what the cooldown is on the, on the gem in the shop. They stole the gem in the last fight, and this is critical. If he is in that Shadow Blade, they won't be able to find him again. Victoria being hounded by four. Batrider also gets caught. This is going to be huge here for They OG. have the stolen lasso as well, but the Fissure from 11. God, he would love an Echo. My kingdom for it, he says, but it's too late. Bat down for 60. OG making all the right moves here down the stretch. They're going to bring the Night Stalker out as well. They've got 80 seconds to work with. No Night Stalker, no Batrider, no Flying Fiends in the night. And now they chase forward. Out comes the chain cross once again. Bouncing decently. Jerex there with the lasso. Tiki may be able to fight, but down he goes. Eleven stays alive. OG looking for more. They're gonna chain him up. Can they lock him down? The bristleback's there, but again, they ignore him. Maybe finding additional kills though. He does bring that fly. The supports have been slain. They have wrangled the bristle. They look to finish him off. He's dropping. He's dropping. Sun maybe comes back in. Triple kill for him. Looking for more of the fissure as well. On a dodge. Oh! kill here 60 second on respawn time the heart on no tail it's the heart of og right now his illusions are so tanky i keep saying that like shrek we will do a lot of damage to the bl illusions but because of the heart that he had for such a long time he's able to tank through absolutely everything no tail looking like a jewelry shop has all the gems on him right now he needs to take it back his base and critically guess what roshan's alive right now will og be able to take this roshan and the ages and cheese away from lgd we'll have another look at this absolutely crazy fight with the silver edge they can almost bring ame down but 11's echo you can see it's still not cooled down still not cooled down and gets it right now comes in with the fissure first the follow-ups there as ana is coming out of the sleight of fist. The timing could not have been more fortunate for LGD. A second or two later, they get that kill, they back away. Ana, man, I thought he used that already. Yeah, I think what we're seeing in these fights is that Lashrak isn't doing enough damage, at least against the heroes that matter. Sure, his AoE damage is immense, you know, but you can only kill heroes like Lashrak, or sorry, kill Rubik or, or Lich at this point. And I think that's where the Aghanim Scepter comes in. It helps you to deal that pinpoint damage. But again, it's just not that good against They're gonna the They're going to try here for No-Tail. He was going for the Roach. The Sheep is coming through. The Lightning from range, blocking him down, stunning him up. Jarex looking for the save. First the four step, then the lip, but still they silence him. Still the control. He doesn't have those Diffusal Blade charts. The Lasso coming through as well. Stolen by Jarex, but he won't be able to use it right now, it seems. On his feet, No-Tail gets wiped out. Out for 100, but does have the buyback. OG could still fight this. No RP for 10, so even if he buys back, I think Roshan might be too low at that point, although LGD's not They're committed. They're scared. Yeah. They, they don't want to overextend. You mentioned buybacks, and we're at a stage of the game where nobody's buyback is on cooldown, so even though we can see who has it, who doesn't, LGD don't know. Top is under attack. 
Oh, well, LGD will start on the Roshan. It's going to be not the fastest one ever. But, but look at the position of Yao. He's ready for a smoke play from OG. He's going to break it on Ana, break it on S4. Or, in fact, the whole OG squad have been revealed. The war in the lane and the starts them out. There it's is a, no vision they on They might them. actually jump on this, Lumi. OG are lurking in the tree lines. But you can see heroes looking like they want to leave that pit. And now gets Roche. content with a potential Roche. And it is about to drop. Age is snagged up by Ame. And now the bat can lunge forward. Look for the jump. Who's he going to find? Hunting OG through the trees, they look for Ana, jumping back to the mid lane, but the Goo is going to stick onto him, he gets slowed down, he tries to remnant backwards, but Yao is there with the catch, the lasso again! RP, he clicks into a stun, S4 didn't activate BKB in time, and he couldn't get off a good RP. Now the chase forward, Ame looking to muscle S4 down, skewer to the high ground, try to live, try to survive, OG must retreat, No Tail holds the line, at least for now, but being hounded by nukes, pounding into him, he scurries backwards, still they Chase in pursuit. Ana also slowed in danger. Flame break pushes them back. No buy back on PL. Oh, uh, maybe. Now on to fly onto the high ground into no tail. They run them down. Rough shot through OG. They're crumbling here. LGD dive deeper straight to the tier fours. That's the call. They want to finish off OG right here, right now. No RP, no PL, no chance unless Shaker a from S4. Yes, steer right into the base. That's fence for four staff. Gets him back out, but the buildings, they are falling very quickly. Diabolic Edict right now is doing so much work. Buster your courage, OG. You have only moments before LGD. Take this game one, and there's the GG. LGD have done it. Amazing play.